I show uh, at least uh, one other project, which is uh, Toronto. It was mentioned uh, as a project. Toronto, although it was a competition, uh, uh, we felt extremely home uh, when we uh, worked there. We, we are working in Toronto with a local partner, uh, DITA. And the, the, the Commission of Toronto actually existed. And the, I think Toronto was provoked by Chicago, um, uh, Chicago's waterfront. Toronto had the idea that its waterfront had no identity, and I think they were right. Um, imagine that a metropolis of five million people, that this is the waterfront, you know, it's three, what is this, 10 feet uh, past. I mean, this is totally uh, not in, uh, in balance. And it is a, a sort of a, a cliche of a North American uh, public landscape because it's innocent and it has no uh, specific uh, um, atmosphere or mentality. It doesn't say anything. If you've, if you've seen it and, uh, and, and people ask you, well, where have you been? How, how did it look? You cannot say, well, it's nice and it's green, and, but the, it doesn't leave an image. And uh, I think it, th that was the competition was, uh, was about it. Of course, we researched the history of the site. You see the, the, the Lake Ontario and the bay uh, where, the, where the dunescape of the River Don uh, situated the, the authentic uh, natural harbor of Toronto. Um, and uh, we were Im immediately uh, stuck by the, the, by the, by the, school, the group of seven, the, the Canadian uh, painters from the early 20th century who, in, in, who went to the landscape painted the landscape and gave the Canadians a frame to understand their landscape. Like in Holland, you know, we look to our landscape because if in a way the, the, the masters painted it and you know, they, they teach us how to look, how to see. That's what they did as well. And the Canadian landscape in every school, you see images like these, this is Tom Thompson where you see a foreground, mature trees, you know, it's uh, life and death and the background of the, of the landscape. Uh, uh, being very sentimental in every uh, type of weather. Um, I decided to take a course uh, in kayaking. I'm a freak on water, I'm, but I'm a sailor. I'm not so good in kayaking. Um, and to learn the, the hand trick that you turn your, because if you paddle on one side, the canoe goes this side, you know? And then you have to stop it and turn the cano canoe in the right direction. But if there is a trick that you, rotate your pedal and then you steer every every strike and that is that's very difficult so this is my teacher <laughs> unbelievable teacher and here's the <laughs> Marlboro man serious you see my hand this is you have to rotate your hand it looks like you're an idiot but that's the way you do it <laughs> And this is, she shows me, you know, this is what you should not do at home. <laughs> but, uh, but it's important. We had a, a sort of a, a stronger understanding of the Canadian, uh, um, let's say, the Canadian sentiment, the Canadian soul uh, by doing that. So we, we more or less uh, asked ourselves, could the city of Toronto be mirrored? Could it be on a waterfront like Canadians think about the waterfront in the most cliche way? Even with a, a, you know, a timber job with a car tires, gigantic trees. I mean, this is what they think about their, their weekend and their cottage. So can Toronto represent itself to Lake Ontario in this way? Is there a way that we can design an urban waterfront? We scale it differently, but which is totally from these components. That was actually the competition, and we won. That was a very uh, surprising, uh, um, um, su surprising story. So, uh, the, the waterfront we uh, designed was uh, was not a, s a thin line. It was actually one or two or three blocks deep and woven. Uh, it is more an urban design than a waterfront only, um, and it includes all kind of wooden uh, inter uh, interventions. And we, we institute, institutionalized a sort of law that every tree to be planted on the Toronto waterfront should be a big one. 
And that's not, uh, that's not for sale because normally they buy only cherry trees because there's always utilities and there's always a parking garage there. It doesn't work. But we said there is no Canadian waterfront with no uh, big trees. So this, is, this should be uh, a new law for Toronto. And we scaled the, the path system up to um, two times nine meter as a minimum. Uh, that's about 60 feet together. And uh, uh, using the North American tradition of wood, uh, making con connectivity over the slip, uh, slips and slip ends, and, uh, and pro pro really claiming a sort of uh, touch, design touch, which has to do with this. So we uh, uh, tested designs uh, of bridges, which are, if you look closer, uh, not very different from what you see in Venice, but are built almost like if you, if you ask a contractor, he would build it like this. Of course, it's in the details uh, uh, when you make a, a good design. So benches from wood, uh, lampposts from wood, and even a floating waterfront with uh, in, in an amount of uh, uh, pontoons which have, uh, this is a wooden deck, with, with, a under, with a belly underwater made of rock. It's, it's an, a metal net with rock as an arti artificial reef to, uh, to create a new fish habitat. Um, so this is actually uh, the plan. In the, in the water, we proposed a floating water lady, uh, uh, shallow water. The whole thing it could be docked and anchored uh, in the summer, t uh, uh, in front of the CN Tower. So from where it communicates to the people in the CN Tower. The Queensky Boulevard, which is now an urban canyon, uh, should be changed in, uh, with uh, Canadian granite, uh, cobblestone, um, um, and beautiful trees into a, a, a boardwalk, or into a boulevard, which invites people and bicycles directly to the waterfront. For all of the slip ends where the, where the Queensky Boulevard meets uh, the Dockland waterfront, we proposed the uh, waved uh, decks, and every deck ha had its own uh, silhouette uh, to make more precise uh, where you are. So, for example, here we see Spadina, and Spadina would have uh, its own bridge silhouette and its own deck silhouette. Uh, the whole system was also better connected to the hinterland than uh, ever before. And, uh, and there we started the design. This design is now finished and realized. So I'll show you quick the effect of the deck. So this is the wave deck. It's, a, it's a unbelievable, but in North America, this is, a, this is the water, water's edge. There is no fence. And we did it. <laughs> unbelievable, huh? So there is a, there is a, a bench uh, all over the place which function as a sort of barrier and it's uh, accepted as a legal uh, solution. In the, in the, in the Docklands, uh, we had to work in winter and we had to stabilize the, 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 the soil because it's uh, toxicated and by drilling the pipes, you could easily uh, pollute the water. So it's a double, double pipe system where they drill through uh, an enclosed uh, body uh, of water. And this is the, the final result. It's unbelievable. So the deck has, uh, strange enough, a sort of uh, pretension of being just a deck, but it also has some expression. It has some uh, excitement. And uh, we, we believe and we are very happy because we did not understand that uh, would happen automatically. But when we see the project today, that it has these both qualities. It's rough and brutal, but it's also very uh, gentle. Um, it's highly appreciated uh, because people, uh, you know, the sidewalk here was literally less than this. And uh, today we suddenly have an uh, enormous uh, span where people can sit and wait and relax. This is uh, the mayor who did the last plank. And um, at night, so here we see the, the first deck, uh, uh, we shine, uh, uh, we illuminate uh, the, the water because under this uh, deck is the hell. <laughs> and it's very interesting. I mean, this is the, the wind normally comes in and the, and the waves stay. So if you're on the deck, you're really up, up, uh, above the water. You feel the water is under, you, under your feet. 
So it's, it's, if you're there, it's emotionally, you're really uh, linked to the waterfront. So we will make an illumination from all the slip ends uh, to make uh, it even more spectacular. Today, uh, we are really hard uh, working on the, on the bridges. Uh, they are now almost uh, for tender. Uh, here you see the result of the, of the different uh, designs for every uh, slip. And Spadina is the one which will be built in this uh, winter and spring and opened in summer. So this is a Spadina deck, Waterfront Toronto Corporation. Um, I click, so here. Um, this is what we're gonna add. So, I mean, the, the bridge is a spectacular uh, timber job, but the joints are uh, extremely architectural, uh, but they somehow work together in a way you, 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 you see the architecture, but it's also extremely uh, hidden and silent. And we might add an ornamental uh, uh, maple leaf uh, illusion uh, to make it more uh, visible. So I will go through this. What is uh, very exciting is that the bridge becomes transparent <coughs> here, but you see the construction through the, uh, through the steps. So it creates this very special moment. And we expect that this will be the Boy Meets Girl uh, Boulevard. <laughs> and this will be extended, so every, uh, let's say, bridge. At the end, we have about three and a half mile of uh, primary waterfront connected through those bridges and boardwalks. Um, the mayor uh, had a budget for um, installation and we asked the mayor to do as an installation the, 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 the future design of Queen Street Boulevard just for a week. And uh, this was very difficult but we had the, the idea that uh, if we could change Queen Street Boulevard even for a weekend, people understand it could be a reality. And that was the purpose. We designed um, a sort of Eiffel Tower of, uh, uh, made of bicycles, which are from the police department of stolen bicycles. <laughs> and, uh, and they liked it a lot, and of course helped by doing that enormously in media attention. And Mayor Miller opened the installation for about 10 days. So you see the, the streetcar with a, with a master plan uh, on, the, on the coach, on the facade. And Mayor Miller uh, opened uh, the Queen Street Boulevard. So here we see uh, the streetcar in the middle. <coughs> Three lanes, one parking, and two for traffic were taken away and changed into bicycle uh, a trail. And this was an overwhelming uh, success because, uh, you know, people immediately Canadians are like Americans; they're very enthusiastic. They, they, they dress up in lycra and you know all kinds of strange. They wear helmets and. They take it very serious to step on a bicycle, <laughs> and, and they come, you know, and Parliament members, they came with the children, and it was uh, unbelievable. Um, and here we see the, the, the effect uh, on Queensky Boulevard. So for a week or even 10 days, it was a different atmosphere, and then Mayor Miller said, of course, he is a clever politician, yeah, so many people ask me, Mayor Miller, why, why can it be always like this? So he didn't invent it, he explained that people invent it like that. And he could also uh, sell it to the, to the bureaucracies by saying, yeah, now we saw how complex it is when you take two lanes out, so we have to work hard on it. And uh, we learned a lot. So this was the storyline. And, uh, and at the moment, this, uh, the project is really uh, upstream. We, we, we are making progress every week. It's great, eh? Thank you very much.